So today we're going to be doing a compression test on my Volkswagen Polo GTI. Um, compression test is basically a gauge and a threaded insert you put into the spark plug hole. You attach it to the gauge and then you crank your engine over four to five times and it will give you a reading on what sort of compression the cylinder is pulling and then from that you can make diagnostic decisions on, as to what is causing either really high compression or too low of compression. The first thing we need to do is to remove the engine cover. That was done with a 10mm spanner taking out the securing fastener and then it pops off with its mounts showing the top of the engine and all of the running gear for the spark plugs. Now we have to remove all the 5mm M6 cap heads to remove all of the electricals. You want to make sure you don't snap any wires or lose any bolts when you do this because if it falls down into the engine bay you're probably not going to find it again and if you snap a wire then you're breaking out a soldering iron and sometimes it's quite tricky to repair wires underneath an engine. Both plugs removed, remove that up to the side, making sure nothing is caught or in a compromising position. This now lets us access the top of the coil packs. Here, four coil packs that we have to remove to gain access to the spark plugs, to then take them out, to then add the insert from the compression tester so we can get a reading on what sort of compression the cylinder is achieving. Now you have to be careful with these because they are very filthy. It's very easy to break them. If you do, the more likely to leave in the wiring. As you can see here, all the wiring has been pulled off. The two core packs are now out. Simply pull them out like that. Sometimes they have a retaining nut, sometimes they don't, depends. But make sure that the same core pack goes in the same hole if you're keeping them. Now it's not, you don't have to do that, but it is advised that you keep the same core pack or the same hole. Um, it will probably have a new spark plug on the end if you do a compression test because it's just good practice to change spark plugs if you're taking an old set out because they're relatively cheap and it takes relatively no amount of time at all and it makes sense to put new stuff in instead of replacing old stuff which could be faulty and could be the problem in the first place. Now using a 16mm spark plug socket and extension bar that goes down the hole and then using a breaker bar we apply the pressure to the top of the breaker bar as we turn and the spark plug should come out. Now that one was very loose, but that might be why this car had running issues in the first place. Too bad either. They all need to be tightened up a little bit tighter when they first go in. There's a small crush washer on the top of the thread of the spark plug designed to obviously crush and seal the cylinder compression inside the cylinder. Now all four spark plugs look like they're relatively in good nick no oil around them, they're slightly white so they've been running slightly hot but it's a turbo engine so that's a little bit expected and this is where we get the compression tester out now you get a gauge of a quick release fitting and then you get three different inserts depending on what spark plug hole you've got now I've done this before so I know 
it is this one here with this thread. You can check that with the spark plug itself and match the threads up and the depth. You can see that the thread and the depth are the same. So this is the one. You have to make sure there's no debris first of all before you put this in because there will be damage done to the engine as a cylinder as the piston comes up the cylinder and it'll hit the top of the engine and if there's anything inside it. So you put the attachment in, screw in clockwise. Okay, now we know that's tight. We get the gauge itself. Put a quick fitting on. And then get the gauge go and crank the engine over about four to five times to get an accurate read. And there we see it's reading just above 160 psi. Now I'll have to look up the specs of this car to find out exactly what it's meant to be but usually it's around 200 I think so this could be possibly quite low. But then just release the pressure you push the little button on the side and it depressurizes just what I'm also going to do is write down each compression for cylinders one, two, three and four. As we can see with this one, this is about 160, 170 psi. So it's ringing true with the first cylinder as well, so that's possibly the correct psi rating, because it's very, very unlikely that both would fail and both will have the same PSI. It's a bit too much of a coincidence for that to be the case. But as before, we release the pressure and then carry on with the next ball. Again, this is 170 PSI, so it's starting to look like that they are all on par with each other. This is the final cylinder once again. 170 psi so we know that all four cylinders are roughly the same I think cylinder one you can see it came out 165 psi because I only did six cranks on that one all the others I did seven you have to do the same amount of cranks on every cylinder to get an accurate reading because it's had the same amount of, of up and down motions to compress the cylinder itself now with them all being 165 to 170 psi there's only a 5 psi difference, but that is probably because, like I said, we cylinder the 1. I only did 6 cranks on that instead of 7, so the extra 5 psi on the remaining 3 cylinders is probably because they had an extra up and down motion to compress the cylinder. So I'm not too worried about that. If one of them, for instance, was coming out about 60 psi or 90 psi or anything considerably lower, um, it would probably be a piston ring or a valve seat gone, which is then taking apart the engine, rebuilding the engine or having a head rebuilt and a new valve so seal put in. And as I was saying earlier, I'm gonna now put new spark plugs into the car and I'm gonna check that the right spark plugs and so the piston don't smash into them, uh, they need to be the correct height. Otherwise if they're sticking too far into the cylinder, the piston's gonna come up, smash it and then that's gonna be a bad day. The spark plugs have come out a bit. I'm going to compare it to the new one and it looks like they are exactly the same level. Do a side by side comparison and the new ones are just Bosch standard single electrode. Um, these do have to be gapped but they normally come gapped from factories so I'm not too concerned about that. So here we have our new four compared to our old ones. You can see the difference is night and day. These are Bosch Super 4, so they have four electrodes. These are single electrodes, but these are slightly more expensive, so hopefully they should do a little bit better. Same with the 4. We have to make sure there's nothing down the hole that could go into the cylinder and therefore damage the piston and crown.
that's all for spark plugs backing they should be torqued to about 20 newton meters each but i've done them hand tight to about 20 newton meters uh, there shouldn't be a problem they're a lot tighter than they were last time you've got to make sure you don't hang off of them because it can destroy the thread and if it destroys the thread then you're going to have no compression and you're more likely you're going to have to have the head sent off to the machine shop to have a bigger thread or for it to be welded and an insert to be put in there's many things you can do but it's something that you really don't want to do now we've got the four packs back in the same holes they came out of Reconnect the wires and then we can replace the mount on top, plug it in. The wires we unplugged earlier, make sure that we plug the right ones into the right sensors. Make sure everything's connected and then the engine cover is ready to go back on. Once again, using the 10mm spanner, the cover bolt is then replaced. And that is how you do a compression chest and a spark plug change on a 1.8 litre 20 valve turbo Polo GTI. Um, the same rules apply to pretty much any car, it's just be careful, don't break anything. And uh, you can also take out the fuse for the fuel pressure regulator or the fuel pump so that you're not getting the smell of fuel into the cylinder when you're cranking it over dry. Um, other than that, thanks for watching. If you liked it, like the video. If you disliked it, dislike the video. Um, and if you'd like to, uh, subscribe to some more stuff in the future.